Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is Outer Wilds, a game with a small handcrafted solar system that was built with a lot of care. And in this series, we've been visiting each of the planets in this solar system and exploring high and low. In today's loop, we pick up with Brittle Hollow, which as many of you know, I usually call Brittle's Hollow as if some dude named Brittle owns it, but I'll try my best not to in this video. As always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. Brittle Hollow is probably one of the most interesting planets in the whole game. It has so much going on, I don't even really know where to start. Hmm, maybe with a freaking black hole at its core? Brittle Hollow seems to be composed of a crystalline material that's been hollowed out. And the end slide of the game suggests at one point it had a molten core that melted this material, leaving it how we see it is in the game, contrary to the most logical explanation that the black hole swallowed that all up. An interview with the lead developer has revealed that the crust of Brittle Hollow has inherent gravitational properties, and this caused space-time to warp so much that the black hole formed at its center of gravity. The gravity on Brittle Hollow is actually quite similar to the gravity on Timber Hearth, being around 0.8 or 0.9 on the surface, sometimes dipping as low as 0.7 for some odd reason it varies. It sits about 12 kilometers away from the sun, trotting around its orbit at 185 meters per second. It's more than double the size of Timber Hearth at 600 meters pole to pole. Brittle Hollow has the last natural moon in the solar system named Hollow's Lantern, but I think the name from the Alpha fits it a bit better, which was the Devil's Furnace. With a surface entirely covered by lava and very active volcanoes, this moon is a menace. Somehow, as if magically refilled by the devil themselves, this thing has been actively bombarding Brittle Hollow with lava rocks for the better part of 200,000 years, and likely a lot longer than that. And although it gave the Nomai who were stranded below a hard time, especially this poor fellow, the Nomai were actually able to find a use for Hollow's lantern. Inside one of the volcanoes that routinely erupts, the Nomai built the fiercest functioning forge feasible to test and smelt different kinds of ore. They would expose these ores to the lava to test how heat resistant they are, with the ultimate goal of being able to create a substance that can withstand the forces of a supernova for several minutes. Ultimately, they succeeded, and this is what encases the Ash Twin projects. The casing allows the components inside to function long enough for them to do their job. The Nomai were actually kind of lucky that the planet they landed on offered protection from the constant bombardment of the lava that makes traveling the surface so dangerous. Brittle Hollow is, after all, a hollow planet, and the Nomai took full advantage of this, creating wooden walkways and bridges leading below the crust. The Nomai took refuge on naturally formed crystalline shelves. They found a location large enough to construct a temporary city, and for something meant to be temporary, the Nomai really did go all out. They even constructed a small building intended to serve as a shrine to the eye of the universe. Connected by bridges, many buildings housed anyone who needed it. We can even find some cute poetry written by a Nomai child here. But the Nomai were sort of nervous about this location. With the constant bombardment of lava rocks from above, some of the crusts would occasionally fall off and crash to the ground, potentially damaging buildings, or worse, hitting the Nomai living there. They had to find a safer place to build a city. Lucky for them, at about this time, one of the Nomai realized something I've already mentioned. The crust of Brittle Hollow has inherent gravitational properties, and they constructed an entire workshop dedicated to refining and controlling this effect. With the invention of gravity crystals, the whole planet quickly opened up to the Nomai. They built a giant gravity crystal roadway underneath the surface, leading them to the most stable location on the planet, the North Pole. Set just below a polar ice cap, they set about constructing a city that would permanently house the Nomai stranded here, which the Nomai named the Hanging City. The melting ice gave them access to all the water they needed, and the brilliant citizens quickly began harnessing energy from the black hole below to power their new city. And this city was huge. Consisting of four districts, they had enough room to house every Nomai give them places to relax, conduct classes to teach the younger generations, and an entire district dedicated to worshipping the Eye of the Universe. The city had just about anything you could ask for aside from frickin' guardrails. The fourth district was very important to the Nomai, and it was actually located just below the surface of the polar ice cap on the South Pole. 
The whole district was oriented upside down thanks to gravity crystal floors, which makes navigating it a bit dangerous. But without the Black Hole Forge district, the Nomai likely would have never been able to build the Ash Twin projects, let alone reunite with the other clan of Nomai stranded on Ash Twin. The Black Hole Forge was pretty much the heart of the Nomai civilization. With it, they were able to create warp cores and eventually recreate the lost technology of the advanced warp core. The Nomai would warp space-time to create and encase a small black hole, and then they would lower it down with the forge to let it interact with the edge of the full-size black hole. After this process was complete, they could link it to another warp core and have instantaneous travel between the two locations. And they were able to use this in a variety of different ways. We see the towers on the Ash Twin all connect to different planets using these warp cores, and they even allow the Nomai to create shuttles which could be recalled to their home base at any moment, neglecting the need for fuel. Using an array of gravity crystals, orbital mechanics, and a bit of maverick-like skills, the Nomai were able to launch their shuttles into space and recreate spaceflight. This allowed them to get anywhere they needed to in the solar system and as soon as it was invented, the two separated groups of Nomai were able to reunite. The story significance of the Nomai shuttles can't really be understated, even though the only use they really have in game is to make you feel like a Nomai badass. We do find some groups of buildings scattered across the surface of the planet, but mostly they are used as entrances to get underneath the surface. One of them would be the Gravity Crystal Workshop, which is also used as an entry to what the Nomai called the Crossroads a shelf underneath brittle surface that had pathways leading to every major location they've constructed. According to Rebic, it's a pretty stable location. From here, we are going to visit the Southern Observatory. With a broken door, the only way to access this location is a series of gravity wells and gravity crystals underneath the crust leading you to an underground entrance. It would likely actually be a pretty fun trip if you could ignore the idea of being levitated above a black hole. The south pole of the planet also serves as one of the most stable locations there is, rarely being hit by a lava rock from the Hollow's Lantern. The southern observatory is really a marvel to behold. On the ground floor is a pole of full of golden substance, as well as a few replicas of tornadoes that we find on Giant's Deep. The roof of the building is a giant glass dome which makes it possible to visibly see every planet from a single location. But this observatory didn't have a telescope like the ones the Harthians have. Instead, they chose to locate the planets through their frequency, like we can do with our signal scope. Each planet has a switch which we can turn on to start tracking that planet. This activates the pool below and brings up a depiction of where the planet is in its orbit. We can actually turn them all on and get a real-time map of our solar system, but this really wasn't why the Nomai built this place. The Southern Observatory was created with the sole intention of trying to locate the eye of the universe. But while trying to do so with this machine, it seems to malfunction and shows the eye being in a myriad of locations. The failure of the Southern Observatory is what sent the Nomai down the path of creating the Ash Twin projects. One of the coolest places we get to see on the planet, we don't actually normally get to see from the inside on the planet. To enter the Tower of Quantum Knowledge, we usually have to wait until Hollow's Lantern breaks enough of the surface for it to fall into the black hole. But in its heyday, it had gravity floors leading right into the tower. This tower would likely be considered almost sacred to the Nomai, as it's dedicated to teaching young Nomai the significance and roles of their journey to the Quantum Moon's sixth location. The tower also serves as a sort of observatory, tracking each planet's frequency and showing us which planet the Quantum Moon is currently orbiting. One of the coolest features of the tower, I think, is the windows of the first floor. While the tower is still on Brittle Hollow, it serves as a great view of the crystal crust of the planet, which is actually a pretty beautiful sight. I can see why Brittle Hollow is a fan favorite planet. It has so many interesting features and the first visit there strikes terror into anybody. Don't believe me? Ask Rebic. That black hole is just a no. And all the Nomai history here just makes it a location I want to keep coming back to again and again. But with that, we have covered just about every significant location on Brittle Hollow. A special thank you to the members here on the channel, and if you'd like to support it, you can click the join button below and become a member. That'll give you access to a handful of live streams as well as some perks on the channel and the Discord. But ultimately, I'm just glad you're here watching the video in the first place. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel and maybe hitting the bell to be notified when a video comes out. And as always, this is a lore explorer diving deep into the game so you can visit your favorite planet again. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.